everyone and welcome to Tips and Tricks with NetBrain. Today we'll be talking about automated enforcement of network design rules and best practices. What is Tips and Tricks with NetBrain? It's a program aimed at helping new and advanced NetBrain users with the help of our NetBrain experts. For just about 15 to 20 minutes, you can join us to see demos and information on extended and unique topics as well as common network challenges. Today's agenda is about 20 minutes. I'll spend most of the time on the demo where I'll show you how we can automatically discover ACL design violations ahead of time and prevent potential business critical outages that would happen during failover at a later time. A little bit about me before we get started. I am a product evangelist here at NetBrain and prior to that, I was a senior network engineer for over 10 years. We at NetBrain have found that 50% of network problems are preventable. They are caused by human error or performance degradation. And we have found that misconfiguration or configuration drift is the primary source of human error induced outages. For example, you could have a misconfiguration of access lists in your redundant routers, and you need that ACL symmetry because otherwise during failover, you could potentially deny important traffic. Enterprises unfortunately lack automated enforcement of your network design rules and best practices. For example, if you have a network-wide QoS policy for voice and video traffic, or edge router access list for traffic separation. How do we as network engineers ensure that network design rules are adhered to continuously? The answer is preventative automation. At NetBrain, we have a three-step preventative automation. If you look at the image here, this is our preventative automation dashboard. It shows you the number of of devices that have preventative automation configured. We have probes and intents. Don't worry too much about the terminology, just think of them as preventative checks. And here you can see on the right side for US BOS R1, the checks that are done preventatively. And I'll show you in the demo. But it's just three steps. We're checking for configuration drift. If we detect the configuration drift, then we're gonna check for any violations to your network design best practices. If there's any violations, the alert will be generated to your email or to the ticketing system so that a network engineer can take a look and fix that problem before it could cause a business critical outage. The premise here is that prevention is much better than cure. So in this demo, as I mentioned, I'm going to show you how we can discover an ACL violation ahead of time. So we have a check for configuration change running regularly. And if an alert is detected, then we're going to kick off some subsequent checks, one of which is checking for ACL consistency. As we can see on the right screenshot, we have R1 and R2. They have their access list, but they are not the same. So during failover from, let's say R1 was the primary, and, there, and then we fail over to R2, by having different access lists, we could potentially black hole traffic and cause a business critical outage for an application or, or voice or video. So let's jump into our demo. So this here is our NetBrain desktop. On the left, there's a button called PA Dashboard, Preventative Automation Dashboard. As I mentioned, these are your number of devices and the number of preventative checks. So let's look at US BOS R1. And before we get right into the demo, I'm just going to summarize for you what you're gonna see. You're gonna see that we have preventative checks for configuration drift and it's running regularly in the background. If we detect a change to the configuration, NetBrain will automatically check for any violations to your network design. In this case, it will alert on ACL consistent inconsistency between routers R1 and R2. 
it will generate an automatic ticket with these preventative results in the ticketing system. And also a NetBrain incident will be automatically created showing you the map of the area, the messages, and also the automatic diagnosis. So it's ready for network engineers to take action and they haven't done anything manual at this point. So we're closing the full network operations loop, right? We're catching problems ahead of time and we're reducing the number of business critical network issues. Okay, so here in the bottom, you see that there are three alerts for configuration change. So NetBrain has detected that there's some configuration drift. Then NetBrain is kicking off these subsequent intents. Now, like I said, don't worry too much about the names, probe and intent, just think of them as preventative checks. So at the top, before we get into the specific alert, I just wanted to show you that this particular device, R1, has all of these preventative checks happening regularly. We're checking for crypto sessions, high CPU, BGP, and configuration change, and more down here. But let's look at the configuration change. Once we detect that there is a change to the configuration, then these subsequent checks are also carried out. The ones that are in red, NetBrain has found the problem. So let's filter. All right, so the first one, let's click and see what's going on with QoS. So NetBrain has found that R2's policy map QoS, the particular class video, does not match with R1. Let's see if we can see it. All right, so R2's QoS policy, R1's QoS policy. If we look at the voice class, this message mentioned, then we will see that R2 is policing at 512K. R1, on the other hand, is policing at 4 max. So if R1 is the primary router, and all of a sudden we fail over to the secondary router, R2, then the traffic may be dropped and therefore resulting in voice quality issues. So here NetBrain is detecting ahead of time that the QS policy is not consistent between these two routers, allowing network engineers to fix this before failover would ever occur to R2 and traffic being policed. Let's look at the second preventative check. Here we're checking for ACL consistency between R1 and R2. NetBrain has found that the ACL is not the same. So if you look line by line, you'll see that different IP addresses are permitted. Actually, this one is missing. And therefore, again, we need that ACL symmetry because if these are redundant devices, they should be twins, right? So in this case, again, NetBrain is detecting ahead of time that there is a configuration change problem and it's resulted in inconsistent ACLs between the redundant routers. So now a network engineer could come in and fix this ACL so that it matches. Therefore, anytime failover occurs, there will no longer be any potential traffic being black hole or denied. Now, once these alerts have been generated, NetBrain will create a ticket automatically in your ticketing system. And before we get into that, let me just recap what we saw, right? So we saw that NetBrain was checking for configuration changes regularly, a change was detected, then we checked for network design violations such as access lists and QoS, and then we alerted on the inconsistent ACL and QoS policy. Next step is the ticket. So this is our ticketing system service now. You can see there's a lot of notes. We, NetBrain has found a problem and this ticket is automatically created from NetBrain into ServiceNow. The problem is happening with R1. The check is for ACL consistency and the violation is that the ACL is not the same. There's also a URL here which points, which, which you can click on to go to the automatic NetBrain incident. So in this incident, we'll see we have a map, we have the messages, and we have the automatic diagnosis. The map is simple, it's just one device because the problem is on this device. But if you know NetBrain, you can just click this plus sign here and add all the neighbors to your heart's content. We see the automatic messages and diagnosis. 
So we see the probe, we see that the configuration change has generated an alert and that this is running every single day comparing current to last config. And once this alert was detected, we see that it was checking for ACL consistency and it has found between these failover devices that the ACL is not the same. This is the same information that you see in the dashboard. So as a network engineer, you have already had NetBrain check these preventative checks regularly and create a ticket when it found a problem and create a NetBrain incident. And all you as a human network engineer needs to do is come in here and review these results and determine what needs to be fixed in the access list. And then go ahead and schedule a change and make the changes. As again, as I mentioned, we're closing the full network operations loop. We're catching these problems, ACL problem, QoS problem, ahead of time before failover would occur and some outage would happen. So we're reducing the number of potential business critical network issues. So that's the end of the demo. Let's get back to our PowerPoint. We're almost done. I have three resources here for you. The first one is a little bit more. You can read about this preventative automation that we offer. And you can also scan these QR codes because um, I know these URLs are long. If you just scan it, you'll automatically go to these, each of these URLs. Secondly, I did mention the terminology probes and network intents. And I don't know if any, any of you are at one of my prior tips and tricks with NetBrain webinars, but we did one specifically on network intent. So if you go to YouTube, you will see, I have a playlist here of the tips and tricks with NetBrain webinars, and this is the one here on network intent. So you can feel free to go and watch and understand a little bit more about the secret sauce between, behind NetBrain and its preventative, proactive network automation. Last resource I have for you is, I don't know if you guys know, but we are offering um, a no-code automation library. It's a subscription-based service, and you can sign up, and we have the best of the best network engineers creating these out-of-the-box automations right and ready for you to use. So this is the web page. You can put in the, your information and sign up for it. And... All right, so that's the end of that. And last slide, questions. So just to remind you, the premise of this, this webinar is about automated enforcement of your network design rules and best practices so that your network is not straying from its intended network design. If you guys have any questions, please type them in the chat and we're gonna answer them for you. So I see we have one question already, and I just want to introduce um, Dave. We have one of our pre-sales engineers here on the line, and he's going to answer these questions. Great, thanks, Abby. Um, yeah, so there's a question about, uh, is this a use case for customers that perform manual conflicts? Um, no, not necessarily. The question is, if it's, sort of, if it's an automation, if you're automating a conflict, um, you'll still get these type of problems. And so here's a good use case. So if you have, for example, a router, uh, a pair of routers, say, and they're in a, they're in a, a cluster, uh, if, you, if one of those goes down, then you, you're, you're suddenly vulnerable. You've got a vulnerability. So you can use it to check for things like that. But you can also use it to check for state things, BGP prefixes, things like that um, on the network. So yeah, it, it is, you're right, you are protected. And, and it is a good point that you actually are protected to a, um, to a large extent um, by, uh, by having automation to push the conflicts totally. But actually there are other things, like I said, routers failing over and actually sometimes um, hardware failures or, or sometimes something further on where you, your, your, your prefixes are changing or particular route entries change or a next hop has changed. So maybe a maybe a, a path has failed over. Those type of things, we can detect that. So we know oh, there's, there's an issue. Maybe nobody's, nobody's um, calling about this yet, but 
but there is a problem with that because there's a root which is which is suboptimal or something like that it's quite good because it's not just you're not just checking configs you can also use that to actually check live state information routing tables neighbor tables all of that type of information thanks dave so any more questions I just wanted to say too that um, there's a section called attachments. You see the paperclip, and there you can actually see the links to um, that I shared on the slide with where you can read more about preventative automation. You can watch the previous YouTube videos on the tips and tricks, um, and you can get access to the no code automation library. Those three URLs are in the attachments, so you can go ahead and click on those directly from here. Please type any questions you guys have in the chat. Okay, we have a we have another question. Thank you. Well, that's a good one. Uh, is it possible to automatically check certain things related to security? Yeah, so that actually you can do that on a number of levels. Actually, um, probably the easiest and the most straightforward for this, and this is something I've seen before, is Again, and it, it depends how you want to configure it, and how you want to set this up. So, what we've spoken about so far, what Abby I showed you, was very much about checking the configs. But like I said before, the configs only part of it. Uh, the real power of of, net, of networking tech with NetBrain, this is something I don't know anyone else who quite does this. It's we're doing more than just checking the configs. We're actually checking the live state of the the, the devices. So what's actually happening in the back end? NetBrain is issuing different plans for Cisco to probably show for that. But actually, it, it, it's looking, it's getting the, the um, information, and then it's comparing it with something, with a golden a golden um, configuration, if you like, or a golden state. So you could actually um, issue a rele the relevant show command rather than the config to check the access lists and then compare that against something else, or perhaps check um, that the, uh, let's, here's a nice example. But if you've got, say, a WAN link, you can verify that the access list, um, lists on either side are symmetrical. Yeah, Little things like that, but also things like security hardening as well. So that's probably, again, an, an easy thing. Most networking devices, they've got all sorts of very useful um, hardening tools, really easy stuff like BPD, BPDU guard and stuff like that, um, and other stuff as well, like authenticating routing protocols, which actually, a lot of the time, they're not necessarily configured. So network can verify that. We can verify more than just doing this in the config, but actually by the, the, the state, the, the, the active status of the device. So absolutely, you can. That, that's the main way we do that. And it's, it's all about verifying, does this match this? Does this match something else? And how do different devices compare with each other? So basically, and again, this is where it gets quite, quite good, because NetBrain is, is issuing the commands and then extracting variables from that, especially when it's doing this live, rather than just looking at the configs. You can compare, if you like, dissimilar devices. You can compare the, <laughs> the values in the Juniper router, MTU, say, with the Cisco, or whatever. So it, it's that ability to do that, which, which, is, which is quite useful. Um, yeah, for security, it, it's primarily around compliance, but also for checking things within the configs and the live settings, such as hard device hardening, but also things like ACLs. I've got them consistent, and have I got, if I've got two different devices, are they necessarily the correct way around and things like that? Thank you, Dave. We also have a, a white paper about the top 10 network automation use cases. So if you want to get some ideas on how you can use um, network automation in your environment, it's a pretty good white paper. Um, you can download it. It's on our website under resources and white papers, and um, it, it'll probably be helpful. Any more questions? All right, so I think that's it for today. Um, just remember, if you have one takeaway from this webinar, that we want to start moving towards automated enforcement of the network design rules and best practices. Right now, it's common to monitor you know, things like link utilization and statistics like that and alert on it, but it's a different mindset to be able to monitor your network design to see if any changes have occurred. 
So that way we can detect problems, uh, potential problems that could cause outages and fix them beforehand. So it's a, it's a change in the way of network operations, but it's definitely the future so that the, the time you save in troubleshooting and the stress and all the craziness that happens when an outage occurs, that we can reduce that significantly through monitoring that your design um, is consistent across your network and it has not changed from what you intended it to be. So I just wanna say thanks to everyone for joining. You can look out for our upcoming webinars. We ha will have another one next month and um, follow us on LinkedIn and YouTube, Facebook and Twitter if you wanna just keep up to date in little bite-sized chunks about thought leadership in, in network automation. We're always posting every day, multiple times a day. And some of these concepts is a little bit difficult to get, but if you stay up to date on our social media and on YouTube, you can learn a little bit at a time. So thanks everyone for joining and have a great rest of your day. Bye.